Hi, I'm Eric Kimball, and today in this video I'm going to show you how to make your own wood wheel hoe handles, like you see right here. These handles have the classic Planet Junior pistol grip on the ends, and I'll provide you with a pattern so you can get that exact same shape. I'm also going to show you how to easily make these tenons that you're going to need on each end of your handle spreader dowel. This video is being made primarily for people who have purchased the PDF instructions that I sell for making your own whiz-bang wheel hoe. And that's what this is. It's a whiz-bang wheel hoe. But you can use what I'm about to show you to make handles for any wheel hoe, old or new. Let's get started. This wheel hoe handle right here is made out of ash wood. Ash is an excellent wheel hoe handle wood. This handle was made by my friend Pat Gorham. He used to make the handles that I sold with the Whizbang wheel hose. Now this is five quarter inch thickness, which means it's seven eighths of an inch. This is a great handle right here, being made of ash and being that thick, but pine, which I have right here, also makes a very fine handle for a wheel hoe. It's inexpensive, it's lightweight, it's sufficiently strong as long as you don't have knots that are going to weaken it. It's three quarters of an inch thick, one sixteenth inch less than this. That's not a significant difference. Pine is a good wood. There's nothing wrong with pine for a wheel hoe handle. But if you want to make it out of ash, these instructions that I'm going to give you will work for ash or uh, maple or any other wood that you have or want to use. This pistol grip pattern that you see right here is an exact duplicate of the old Planet Junior pistol grip handle. I copied it off of a Planet Junior wheel hoe that I have. It, you can't get much better than that for a wheel hoe handle. There are three different ways for you to get a pattern for this old Planet Junior grip. The first is if you've purchased a wheel hoe kit from me, you'll find this heavy stock pattern in there. Just cut around it like that and you can use that to trace around on your wood. The other option is if you have purchased this uh, a wheel hoe um, instructions and specifications PDF from me, you'll find on page nine the pattern here and you can you could uh, copy this page cut around this pattern make sure that your squares are one inch if you uh, copy this at hundred percent you should end up with squares one inch and you can uh, trace around that paper uh, pattern N not as easily as with cardstock but you're only doing a couple so you could make that happen for sure now the other way if you don't have the kit pattern or you decide you don't want to uh, buy my specifications, that's okay. At the end of this video, I'll put a picture with the grid and the outline on it and you can go from there. If you're making a wheel hoe according to the instructions I provide in the PDF that I sell here, you're going to want handles that are 52 and a half inches long. That's the right length for an average height person. If, and I would say average is my height, five foot nine or thereabouts. So, uh, if the, so the 52 and a half inch length handle is going to work for average people. If you're taller than average or shorter than average, and you're concerned about the, uh, the height of the handles as you work them, I've got instructions on the top of page nine for adjustments. But 52 and a half inches is going to work for most people. This pine here is, what did I cut these at? No, they're five foot, or five foot and a little bit. So that's, so a 10 footer, a 10 foot one by four of pine, if you decide to use pine, is all you're going to need for your handles. And I should tell you though, that the authentic pattern for the uh, Planet Junior wheel hoe handle is a bit more than three and a half. Standard one by four is three and a half. It's a bit more. It's almost an eighth of an inch more. So if you want 
the full authentic Planet Junior handle, you're going to want to be a little bit wider. But for all practical purposes here, for demonstration purposes, three and a half is going to work for us. So I have extra wood here at five foot long, and I'm going to take my handle and bring it down a ways because I want this, this wood, as you'll see, to kind of hang on to when I rip this handle on my table saw. But first of all, I need to draw the pattern. And you can see here that the pattern, you should be able to see that, sticks over one eighth of an inch. So I'm gonna have to uh, maybe reshape that. I don't know what I'll do exactly, but for now I'll just trace that like that on both of these. Now I'm going to cut this curvy pattern here with my jigsaw, but the length of the handle I'm going to cut on my table saw. I could cut it with the jigsaw, but it's going to be easier with the table saw. And what I'll do is I'll cut up into somewhere about in here and stop. You can see here where I stopped the cut and where I'm going to cut now with my jigsaw. I've got this board clamped to my sawhorse so it's good and secure. And I played around a little with redrawing the shape, but I decided to stay with the original even if it is clipped there. There you can see the grip pattern is cut out. You never get a super good cut with a jigsaw, but it's good enough. I'm gonna make it better. But first, what I'm going to do is cut this to the finished length. I'm going to drill the holes for the attachment bolts on the bottom and for the spreader dowel up near the top. And I'm going to then take my router and round the edges. And then I'll turn my attention to making this look a little bit better. So before I route the edges, I just want to show you that I have drilled the holes there on the bottom after cutting the handles to length. I've sanded the handles so that they're a little cleaner looking. There we have our, our spreader dowel holes and the grips. And we're still going to do some work on those grips to make them smoother and nicer looking. But there you go. I'm now I'm going to, I'm going to route the edges all around with a three, three eighths inch round over bit.
Routing the edges like that really makes a difference in the appearance of the handles. They look a whole lot better. And as you will see here, when I get to the grips, even they look a whole lot better. See that? They, they need a little, a little touch up yet though. So to do a little bit of touch up on these, get rid of the little bit of a ripple there in my cod and a, it's just not a smooth transition around there. I'm gonna use an old rasp here. Just kind of finesse it a little. That's what I'm doing. And then when I'm done finessing it, get in here a little bit. That I don't have, but you get the idea. We're just kind of fine tuning that. Okay, I, I've got it. Pretty much got it. I could work on that more, but there's there's no need. It's in good shape. I'm going to take my router now. I'm not going to show you. You, you got the idea, but I'm going to just reroute around this on both sides and uh, clean that up. Okay. I'm using a little Minwax Puritan Pine. We'll get a stain on these handles. Then we'll get a finish on them. Okay, let me just show you these finished handles, all stained, and how nice they look. Let me put my hand on one of these just to show you how the grip is. And that nice grip. You can grip here, you can grip here. It's a good grip, even if it is an eighth of an inch smaller than the authentic Planet Junior grip. Okay. Yeah, they turned out good. We're all ready to bolt them on down there. And I've got the uh, dowel cross piece, which stay tuned. I'm going to show you how I made that. And I have one more thing to do to these handles. The finishing touch on these handles after the uh, stain has had a few hours to dry is to coat them with the rub. The rub. If you've seen my videos, you're familiar with the rub. This is a natural beeswax, turpentine, and boiled linseed oil mixture that is the perfect coating for all outdoor handles. I call it hoe handle rub, and I have a whole video about how to make this. It's, it smells wonderful. You should make it just for the smell, if, even if you never put it on a handle. That'll be the finishing touch on these handles once they've dried down. Now let me show you how to make that uh, dowel spreader bar. Making the tenon, and this is a tenon right here, in the end of your handle spreader dowels is very simple, as I'm about to show you. The, the tenon is 7 16 of an inch in diameter. It's an inch and a quarter long. It could be a, a skosh longer. That's not real critical. But 7 16 is the right size to fit into the 3 quarter inch hole in your handle. Making this tenon requires a simple table saw setup like you see right here. And this is an old portable contractor's table saw. It's not a great saw, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be a great saw. What you wanna do, first of all, is set your fence up the length of the tenon, which is an inch and a quarter, so that when you cut with the blade, you're cutting at an inch and a quarter back here, one and a quarter. Then you want to look down through the plate here and find the approximate center of the blade. And you're not looking so much at the blade as at the bolt, or the nut, I should say, and the, and the arbor that holds the blade on. And you can mark that. And it doesn't have to be exact, just needs to be approximate. Then, back from that line, from that center point, you want to come back um, about half the, the thickness of your dowel. This is a one inch dowel, so it would be a half an inch. And that needn't be exact either. But, but approximate. 
this piece of three quarter inch plywood is going to be then clamped. I've got two clamps holding it to the table. And this is going to be for my dowel to rest against like that. Put this all in place, the fence adjusted and the, uh, the stop here, we'll call it in place. And, th and the blade would be down. Then you would uh, start to turn the blade up a little bit at a time and you would feed the, the end of this into your blade just a little and turn it all the way around so that you can see what kind of a, a tenon size you're going to have. And then you would keep adjusting your blade up, inching up or incrementally coming up just a little until that shows a uh, tenon diameter. Now I'm going to reposition the camera. I actually have this all adjusted and I'm just going to show you that procedure of s turning the end into the blade to see the tenon diameter and make, and make sure that you have it. So there you can see that I have a tenon diameter of 7 sixteenths of an inch. I did that by cranking the blade up incrementally uh, before you saw this to get it just right. Now I am going to cut the shoulder of the tenon. I'm going to, I'll tell you what I'm going to do and then I'll do it. I'm going to turn the blade on, drop this down slowly with this tight against the fence now, and I'm going to turn this all the way around. So now you can see there that I've got a very nice shoulder to start making the tenon. Uh, again, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, then I'll do it. I'm going to turn the saw blade on, put this back in place, drop it down into position there, and slowly pull it back like this. Okay, so what you can see now is that I've created a nice flat. I've started to shape the tenon. The, uh, the set of the carbide teeth, and this is no special blade, it's just, a, uh, it's just a common blade. The set of the teeth has carved away that wood. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the saw on again, put this in place, set it down, and pull it back and forth like this while turning the dowel and I'm gonna form my tenon. And looky there, we have got a beautiful tenon formed on that dowel. Now I've got a little bit of extra wood right there. You may have to uh, you know, clean it up just a touch here and there, but that's, a, that's it. That's, the tenon has been made and that's a lovely tenon. The last thing you wanna to do to finish off your tenon is to chamfer the end. You don't want it square like that. It just doesn't look right. So I do this with a, a knife. No power tools are necessary. You can just carve that. I'm actually doing it in an awkward position so that you can see better, but it, it still works for me. Just, uh, just carve a little, a little bit at a bevel all the way around there. It's called a chamfer. 
and uh, that's it. Got a nice finished look to it. You've made your spreader dowel when you get to that point. The tenon that you've made, the 7 16 inch tenon, will fit loose in the hole in the handle. And that's what you want. You want it to fit loose because once the tenon is put in and it's at an angle, it's going to it's going to hold. It's going to hold very well. You, you need it loose so that it can be at an angle. There's no glue, no pins, none of that's necessary. And you can see our nice chamfered edge projects out a little bit. You do have a little bit of tenon tight here and loose here. And that's no problem. That's the way it's supposed to be, right there. Very nice.